Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about is something you don't want to do to your network. Um, even if you have MFA, our recommendation is to never expose remote desktop um, to the internet. It's just not good practice. Uh, most people do not secure their remote desktop with multi-factor authentication. And... Uh, that should be a minimum. So we always recommend hiding remote desktop behind a VPN. So I will tell you right now, I'm going to show you a handful of routers that I've got here. And I'll talk about the price. So, you know, the Edge Router X, this is a $59 router. This Microtik is like a $49 router. This Grandstream is like a $59 router. Here's a custom router, you know, that can run any router operating system. That's about 400 bucks. Here's a USG that can be easily had. Here is uh, one you're going to see, you know, some more information about coming up. And even though I didn't want to show you this, yes, here is even an ingenious router. And all of these have the ability to somewhat secure your network as much as you'd like to um, secure it. If you, if you have services behind the firewall, um, that you need to get to, you should be using a VPN unless it's like a hardened web server, which then in that case, you're probably going to have uh, some sort of a DMZ set up, you know, so traffic can come in. But if a machine's compromised, it can't get to the rest of the network. There's ways that you're supposed to build secure computing platforms. And just being lazy and opening port 3389 is not a good idea. I mean, even the the most inexpensive of routers, I've got that RUT. I'm going to leave a link to all these routers that I can. Even that RUT 300, even though it's, um, you know, 100 megabits only, it can still uh, provide you with VPN services. All, most of these now can do WireGuard if you don't want to do OpenVPN and you don't want to do IPsec. Um, and, you know, then we even look at doing MFA on top of the VPN. So, you got to be secure. A lot of people think they are and they're not. If you've just got 3389 open, you are you are not secure. So, here's a an article from Threat Post is remote desktop protocol secure. It can be. So they talk about all the things such as re, uh, multi-factor authentication and all these things that you need. Um, between Q1 and Q4 2020, attacks against remote desktop protocol surged by 768%. A report published by Kroll in October 2020, identified that 45, 47% of ransomware attacks were preceded by RDP compromise. What are we doing? It is bad security. It is bad. It's just a bad idea to open port 3389 from the outside. And don't say, okay, well, we'll change the outside port because these people are smart enough. These people are smart enough to scan, and that's what we're going to look at that here. So let's hop over and look at this. So this is Shodan. If you're not familiar with Shodan, Shodan is like the Google of IoT devices and Internet-connected devices. And I just did a search for remote desktop, 3.5, almost 3.6 million hits, top ports that are open, 3389, 3.3 million. And then these other ones are people probably trying to get cute, uh, and change that outside port, and they're, you know, Shodan is still finding it. So you can see I searched for remote desktop. Now, I'm not going to click on any of these because it's not really my business, but here's what I'm going to tell you is once you end up on Shodan, uh, then you're in trouble, right? Because a lot of people use Shodan and other services like it to track these kinds of things. So uh, if these are just the ones we know about, the ones we don't know about that the hackers probably know about, but they're not telling everybody about, there's probably more of them. So uh, here's one from Berkeley, uh, the the college. And they talk about um, how secure is Windows Remote Desktop. Well, remote desktop sessions op operate over an unencrypted channel, preventing uh, over an encrypted channel, preventing anyone from viewing your session by listening on the network. However, there is a vulnerability in the method used to encrypt sessions in earlier versions of RDP. So you got to make sure that things are up to date, which is best practice as well. But if you're opening port 3389, are you practicing patch management? I don't know. It's your guess is as good as mine. Uh, remote desktop can be secured using SSL TLS in Vista, Windows 7, 8, 10, um, 11. These, uh, some of these systems are no longer used by Microsoft. 
But there, I mean, at a minimum, you you have to have look every, two factor authentication, restrict access using firewall. So if you have MFA open and you have it open, then uh, you know you should be restricting who can connect to that. Uh, enable network le- uh, level authentication. Limit the users who have access to that. All these things have to be done. These should be done, and we do these even if we stick remote desktop behind a VPN, which is our go-to. We never expose unnecessary services that aren't hardened. Um, and, um, you know, if you think you've got cyber liability insurance, um, you should check with your carrier because um, – Check this out. This is uh, cbiz.com. I'm not sure exactly who they are. I just did a search for cyber liability insurance coverage. And on the bottom of this one, it says, due to increase in ransomware attacks, if remote desktop protocol or any other type of remote access to desktops or server applications is enabled, use of multi-factor authentication is required. And I guarantee you that most of you watching this are not running multi-factor authentication on your RDP. I'm not trying to shame you, but I'm trying to tell you to stop for a second and think about what you're doing, the ripple effect of just opening port 3389. And we're going to do more of these best practices. See, my camera got tired of people having port 3389 open and decided to just quit on the topic. Um, Here are three ways remote access can make or break obtaining cybersecurity insurance. And I'm going to tell you the reason I'm harping on this so much is because I work in this every day. I've gone through this. I go help people go through this. And just some of the little things that you should be doing that people don't because they think it's an inconvenience, first of all, can cause you to have a data breach. And second of all, can cause you to not get uh, cyber liability insurance. You know, remote access could bypass multi-factor authentication. MFA, MFA, MFA. Uh, network proper se- uh, network segmentation. RDP pays Remote access isn't inherently secure, and it's not. So stop just opening 3389 to the Internet. Even if you've got MFA on it, I'm going to say uh, don't open it. Here's a here's an article from Cloudflare. What is RDP? What are the vulner, vulner, main vulnerabilities for RDP? Unrestricted port access, weak user signing credentials with no MFA. And then once Windows has a, a vulnerability, well, the next thing you know, people are uh, they're exploiting it through remote desktops. So get yourself a router. You probably already got a router, and uh, you know if you. But if you've got like the Comcast Gateway or the Cox Gateway or whatever came with your service, you're probably going to want to buy another uh, firewall. I'm going to leave a link to a bunch of these firewalls down there. You can shop around, make your own. They are affiliate links. If you've got questions about this or comments, or you want to say that I don't know what I'm talking about, whatever it is. Leave it down in the comments, and no matter what you say, make sure you give me a thumbs up. You subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with all these affiliate links. And if you need IT consulting, if you need to secure your networks, if you need to get through the cyber liability insurance um, uh, uh, checklist, and you need to make sure this is all done, reach out at willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form on the front along with uh, anything else that you might need. And we'll reach out to you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. Stop opening unnecessary reports to the Internet. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.